On one of the coldest days of the winter, right after Ronald Reagan's second inauguration, hundreds of members of the American agriculture movement came to Chicago to protest the government's farm policies. Their focus was the Chicago Board of Trade. They claimed that speculators were making money at the expense of farmers. This videotape is an independent observation of what happened during two days of protest and what has been a complex and ongoing public policy issue. Is this a revolution? Well, I think as far as the family farm system is concerned, we're in the 11th hour. If we don't turn this thing around, then we're going to lose that family farm system. In 1985, it would determine whether a family farmer or this country exists any longer or not. And when this happens, and when we are gone, and your big corporations are going to take over your insurance companies, your oil companies, the federal government, and when they, this happens, the, the food is going to be in the hands of a few. But I see this as having vast ramifications for the future of our whole nation. If we want to have a strong economy, the place to begin is with the agriculture, which is the foundation of the economy of this country. What we're trying to say is if the family farm goes, we're talking about the very base of the economy uh, being so radically altered and our own future being so vastly jeopardized. We're depleting our natural resources and the farmer is a natural resource, he really is. Now, why are we here? You know, I've, I've been in Washington, D.C. a lot of trips and a congressman always told me if one person wrote a letter up there, you could really figure that there was at least a hundred of his constituents back home that felt the same way. Well, you know, whenever farmers and their wives are willing to drive all across this country in this type of weather to come up here, how many people are we representing back home that feels the exact same way that we do? You know, I've had calls from all over this country from people that's telling me, said, Wayne, I can't go, but I'm sure supporting your efforts up there. These people are going to be on the telephones and they're going to be, be writing letters and they're going to be doing a lot of things back home to support the people that's out here on the front lines tomorrow. The reason why we're up here is to draw attention to the most unjust marketing system in the world. I would like to put some words that are not mine, but are from people. You know, before I got involved in this Chicago Board of Trade deal, I had a lot of calls from a lot of different people. I spent hours and hours of research talking to people from across the country. It's unbelievable the type of market system that we've got. And talking to Dr. John Helmuth, he says what we have is a marketing system that allows people to sell our product before they ever buy it from us. Total disregard for our cost of production and our need for a reasonable return. He said what it allows is the major grain companies to sell our agriculture products at their price and then through the speculative short selling and the manipulation of our prices, they can drive our prices down. And the further they drive those prices down, then the more money that they make. We're also concerned because the speculative short selling allowed them in 1983 to sell 38 bushels of soybeans for every one that we produced. All we're simply asking is that before you can sell a product, you have to own it. No one should be able to be allowed to sell something that they don't own, have no money tied up in, sell it short, and drive those prices down and make a profit by doing so. You know, on the, on the stock exchange, if a company issues so many shares of stock, that's all they can sell. But they should not have the right to sell that product before they have bought it and have title to it to start with. That is one <laughs> One other thing before I get down to what we're going to do tomorrow and how we need to do it. This was in the Science Christian Monitor. In 1981, it says that we subsidized Russia $32 billion with agriculture prices cheaper than they could produce it themselves. And they was able to subsidize their buildup of arms because they could buy it from us cheaper than they could produce it themselves. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we have got to get the people to understand that we're not a problem, that we're that solution. We have that opportunity if we tell our story well tomorrow. As I said before, I believe that the American farmers got the greatest story in the world to tell. Tomorrow, we need to tell that story very well. For us to be able to win, these people that we're dealing with are very, very powerful people. We've got to have public support on our side. And to be able to do that, we've got to show them that if we succeed with our goals and what we're trying to do, it will not only help us, but it will help them. We've got to be able to show them that the reason why people are going hungry around the world, as well as in the United States, is not because agriculture prices are too high, it's because they're too cheap. What does it matter what the price is in a grocery store if you're out of a job and have no income? You can't buy that food regardless of the price. But by the American farmer able to receive a fair price, we can put all the people back to work in this country and still produce the food at a reasonable enough cost that they can feed their family and still maintain a high standard of living. We've got to be able to tell the story so well so that the politicians in Washington, D.C. realize to not deal with agriculture as a problem, but to deal with us as a solution to the economic problems facing this nation. But we're right now we're pushing for people of the cities to help us because we can explain to them why their unemployment is so high in the city. It's because American farmers are not buying anymore. We're the largest industry in the world and we're totally broke. We can't buy anymore and we can't buy, they can't build tractors. When they can't build tractors, they don't need steel workers anymore. So we're trying to relate to the city people, you know, that if they'll help us solve our problem, we'll solve their problem. Because our common survival is the survival of the nation. Is, this, is it safe to say that this is a matter of uh, whether we eat in the future? I think there's no doubt about it, uh, that um, the question of whether we eat, thank you very much, the question of whether we eat in the future is a question of whether we are able to join hands with these persons. What we're going to attempt to do, and everybody here has to make up their own mind what part they want to play. In the morning, as close to 8.30 as we can possibly get everybody together. We would like for you to start getting in buses or whatever. We was going to march from here up there, but with the bitter cold that we got, nine and a half blocks for a lot of people in this cold weather, they could be hazardous to your health. And so anybody that doesn't want to march, there's some people that's come up to me and expressed the desire to go ahead and march, that they brought enough warm clothes that they feel that they can go ahead and walk up there. If you want to walk and march up there, that'll be fine. For all of you that don't, we're going to try to provide as much transportation as we can. You may have to use your private vehicles or however you have to to get there. We would like for everybody to get there as close to 9 o'clock in the morning as possible. What our goals are is to be able to get in on the floor of trade and get the traders to suspend trading until we can sit down and work out these problems. Now, I know there at the Chicago Board of Trade and the Mercantile that they have really increased their security. It's going to be very difficult. But ladies and gentlemen, if we don't turn this family farm system around, we can already see what's happening out there in the country. We've seen in Nebraska where they sent a SWAT team in at 10 o'clock at night and shot and killed a family farmer that refused to leave that farm. Ladies and gentlemen, the thing that concerns me the most is the amount of desperation that's out there on the farm. These thousands and thousands of farmers, that's good producers, good managers, and they're being forced off of that land with nowhere to go. We've got to turn that situation around because this desperation out there on the farm is going to lead to violence whenever there's so many people faced with being out on the street with nowhere to go. We've got an opportunity, hopefully tomorrow, to help start turning that situation around. Now that any time in anything that we do, if the police come up to you or the security guards and they get a hold of you and say you're under arrest, ladies and gentlemen, let's conduct ourselves in a very, very positive manner. Let's treat the police and uh, the whatever law enforcement officers we see with the utmost courtesy and respect. We're not up here to destroy, we're up here to build. If we're successful in getting in on the floor, then let's, when we leave it, Let's leave it as in good a condition as it was whenever we got there. If they have the doors locked, then I'm going to try to do everything I can to get through those doors. 
the people that go through those doors and try to get on the floor are on the highest risk group of being arrested. You know, in our country, if we're being unjustly treated, we have the right to protest that injustice, to bring it to the attention of our elected and appointed officials and those in power so that that injustice can be corrected. And that's what we're going to be doing tomorrow, and we're going to do it in a very American way. But ladies and gentlemen, if it's necessary to go to jail, I'm willing to do that to protest the destruction of this family farm system. I've been involved in protests and demonstrations before. Ladies and gentlemen, you're always judged by your very worst, not by your best. The main thing that the average man on the street's going to see and the people's going to see across this country is our very worst actions, not our very best. So let's keep them all on a level that we can all be proud of. And if we do our part right, if we're able to be able to tell our story well, we can make some major achievements here for the family farm system in this whole country. Does everybody agree that it's got to be done peacefully? Does anybody disagree with that? Okay. It's the way it's got to be done. We need to wait for them before before we continue the demonstration. for the last 32 years, there would be no public and private debt, and there would be no federal debt in this country right now. When they substituted parity uh, debt for parity agriculture, they begin to create the debt that this country is wallowing in now. And this is a lot of what's happened right here. The, the profits that should have went to agriculture have gone to this group right here in the last 32 years. We're blocking the right of way over here. Want to step back behind the barricade, please? Okay. Let's get the other side, fellas. Can we back away from the barricade a little bit? Hey, get, get that guy in the front side of it. Tell him to be arrested when they go in. What's that way? When I went farming, I farmed for 10. Hey, the last three years, I lost all of them. What we're hoping to be able to do, Phil, is to bring attention to the destruction of our family farm system and the reason why, and to bring attention to what we feel is the most unjust, unfair marketing system uh, imaginable. We've got the Chicago Board of Trade and the Mercantile that sets the prices on agriculture products. We've got a marketing system that allows people to sell our product before they ever buy it from us. Total disregard for our cost of production and our need for a reasonable return. We have speculative short selling that allows people to sell a product they don't own, have no money tied up in, sell it short, the price goes down, and they make a profit while we're out there trying to compete in the cash market and it keeps driving our prices down. Also, the large grain companies can sell the grain before they buy it from us at their price, and then through the manipulation and the speculative short selling can drive the price down and then buy the grain from the farmers, and the farther they drive our price down, and the more they make. In 1983, for every bushel of soybeans the farmers produced, they sold 38 bushels through that speculative short selling. And that doesn't reflect supply and demand. It just simply reflects a gambling house up here. Now, that just doesn't seem right to me that they can trade my product before I even plant it. And they can trade it before I even harvest it. And, uh, with it, and they never ask me, can they trade it or buy it? And they never take possession of the product. So really, if these people want to gamble, I, I suggest they go to, you know, to Las Vegas and, and instead of gambling with the farmer's future. And these are very powerful people. We've met with the officials of the Chicago Board of Trade and Mercantile on two different occasions. And, you know, simply sitting down and saying, please, you know, will you sit down with us and let's try to work out these problems? It just doesn't seem to work. The reason why we have liquidity in this marketplace is because there are speculators available to trade. 
Uh, I would suggest to those individuals who are concerned about uh, speculators in this marketplace that if there were no such speculators to trade on a daily basis in our markets, that the producer would uh, uh, be subject to the whim and caprice of whomever he had to sell to, whether it's his elevator or whether it's a large grain firm. Last week, we set up a meeting with the USTA and Mr. Kreitz. We informed him that we don't set prices here. We have many uh, buyers and sellers from throughout the world, and we sympathize with the plight of the marginal farmer. We are not the cause of this problem. It's a problem we suggest that he go to uh, Washington, speak with the administration, speak with Congress, and uh, he might have better successes there than he would have here. If we get on the inside, please don't damage anything in there. When we leave, we wanted everything to be in as good a condition as when we got here. We're family farmers. Let's act accordingly. see the people that's here. You know, they're not a bunch of wild-eyed radicals. They're family farmers. They're, uh, they're the backbone of this country, and they're standing up. And, you know, I think if there was ever a time that this country needed the American farmer to get off of their back and then down on their knees and then stand up on their feet, that time is now. And it doesn't take violence, and it doesn't take bloodshed. It just takes good people to quit taking this great country of ours for granted and get involved. Sir, why are you being, why are you being arrested? If you have anything of value, it has to come from nature, and it has to take some labor to produce it, or you won't appreciate it and give it any value. Nature is the mother, labor is the father. 